This video is sponsored by Clean My Mark X. Hey guys, welcome back to HMHT. So as you can see, today Apple has released a new iOS update and it's iOS 14.6 beta this is the first beta when it comes to 14.6 and it's actually interesting because ios 14.5 isn't even actually out officially so it's something that's quite strange but these are the other updates that apple released so yesterday apple released mac os pixel 11.4 and as you can see they released ios 14.6 beta as well as ipad os 14.6 beta and if we go down you'll be able to see that we have a new watch os update beta and it's watch os 7.5 beta 1 i'll be doing a video on that stay tuned for it and also they released tvos 14.6 beta one those are all the updates that came out and for me on my iphone as you can see the update size came in at exactly 4.1 gigs and i was updating from ios 14.5 release candidate now if we go to see the build number or the software changes that came with this update we go to the about and click here you can see the software version that we have 18f 5046f so the build number has an f at the end 4.04.00 that's the modern firmware version and if we go to iphone storage we want to see how much this update is taking so it just takes a moment to load and as you can see here system is taking up 6.84 gigs that is very normal and it's something that's actually good now let's talk about new features and changes the first one that i would like to talk about if you go into your settings and go to software update since i'm already updated you won't see it but this is something that was pushed out dynamically and it actually gives you the ability to select a software update now if you're updating for example like from an older version of ios 14.5 and the release candidate which is sort of deemed to be final you have the option to select the 14.5 or if you wanted the beta you could choose ios 14.6 the beta now that is something new it's actually something that was pushed out dynamically so you don't actually have to update to ios 14.6 to see this but it's good that apple has added this and when you want to update to a final build coming from a beta you don't even need to now delete your profile so this profile that you see here you don't need to delete it when an official version comes out and you want to update to it that's something good and the next thing that i want to show you here has to do with the new apple tv remote that was just released so as you can see it's been updated and it has the center button or the big center button as you can see there as was depicted by the apple event that just completed now within the home applications there have been updates so if you have smart devices that you connect to or you have set up in your home you can actually use this as a home or a microphone device and you'll be able to speak using your phone as a mic and if your smart device is a speaker the person at the door will be able to hear that but that's something that's mentioned in the code and is not fully supported yet by ios 14.6 it could be something that comes out in future or in later betas of ios 14.6 and also something else that has been added has to do with the podcast application so if you use the podcast app you can sort of set up subscriptions and this is something that's coming in future and if you subscribe on the iphone obviously you'll be able to access all your other subscriptions on your different devices like the mac and also like your ipad and so on so that's something that's mentioned in the code and is to be coming soon also something else that's supposed to be coming soon according to what the code says has to do with apple pay and also family sharing support for the apple card those are mentioned in the code and aren't yet fully here with this update those could be something that we get in future betas now someone posted this over on twitter that developers starting with ios 14.6 you no longer can use the minimum os version information property key list to declare the minimum release of mac os in which your apps run instead 
you now use LS minimum system version. So this is something that you would like to look into or want to look into if you're a developer as there's some wording changes when developing certain applications or softwares that depict the minimum requirements for apps to run. So those seems to be most of the new changes and new features that came with this update. If we go to the performance here, you can see the scores that I got here. So we'll start with CPU. For single core, I got a score of 916. And for multi-core, I had a score of 2190. Previously on 14.5, I had 918 and 2256 so that's the cpu comparison and for gpu i had a score of 3837 and if we go back you can see what i had on 14.5 i had 3685 so a little bit better when it comes to gpu but other than that overall performance seems to be quite the same as 14.5 rc that i was on and when there's going to be more new features or more new bugs or changes that i find within ios 14.6 or when new updates come out i'll definitely make videos about them and keep you updated other than that that's about it for me if you like this video please leave a like down below and stay safe and i'll see you in the next video very soon Peace.